Again, if you are joining, go ahead and hit your share button so we can get into this broadcast proper. We're going to be talking quite about a number of issues, a number of things going on in the revolution. It is part. It is part. We're going to be talking about the killings in Bangam. We're going to be talking about the killing of uh, the chief of the BLM. We're going to be talking about uh, U.S. Uh, retired Ambassador Cohen. We're going to be talking about French Cameroon report on the massacres in Ngabu. A lot of things to talk about, so please let's quicken that. Hit your share button. Hit your share button. Let us get rolling. And while you do so, let me say for a moment, those of you who are joining the broadcast, let me see those of you who are joining the broadcast. So please go ahead. Let's quickly, let's quickly populate the platform with your shares, both on Facebook and YouTube. Let's do that quickly. Let's do that quickly within the next three minutes. Let's do that. In the meantime, I'd like to know who is here on the platform, who is joining uh, the platform. All right. All right. Hit your share button, ladies and gentlemen. I like the pace at which the numbers are rising. So please let us quickly, in the next three minutes, make up 300 people. I'm actually less than 300 people to make up the 700. Uh, let me see who is here. Uh, Benaviro Efiom, I see you. Richard Wright, Jessica Aquo. I love, we love you, Secretary Chris. Thank you, Jessica. Larry West Leon, see you. Bobby Ladona, Larry Cooper is watching. And uh, JB Tai is also watching. Eric Ate, my comrade over there in the great state of Minnesota. Prince Ikik Ikokobe, thank you for joining, sir. Baboon somewhere, my Indim. Larry Cooper mentioned you. Kesitu Bongchu, I see you. Vicky Ngwembo, okay, she says hello. Oben Obi, the lion man of Ambazonia. Yes, sir, I received that. Peter Ngwa, greetings from Afghanistan. I don't believe you. Come on, you are not in Afghanistan. What is an Ambazonian doing in Afghanistan? Well, however, thanks for joining the broadcast. I see also uh ben ingwa i see the the, the the names are scrolling really fast water chair always always here waters thank you Messi enjoy always always here also boris nash it's a grace man grace man of god grace man of god thank you thank you uh, mirabel beat i see you patriotic salute our able secretary thank you thank you mazimi tanji I see you. I see Hilary Ajong. Hello, Secretary Chris. Your outing yesterday was awesome. A lot of people say so. Thank you for the compliments. All right. Uh, Rashia Sachs. Uh, I see Fidelis in Zegong. May his blessings be. Oh, I missed the rest of it. I see Glad Gladys. Okay. Also, A.D. Damario. Ladies and gentlemen, we are almost hitting 500. The numbers are not growing as fast as I would love. So please, if you have joined and you have not hit the share button, go ahead and do so. Go ahead and do so as quickly as you can. We have a lot, a lot to cover here uh, today. I am going to be talking about uh, some things going up in Ngoketunjia. Uh, we're going to be talking about the cancellation of 20th May. Cancellation of 20th May, ladies and gentlemen. Did you hear that? La Republic du Cameroon is cancelling 20th May. This is the beginning of our victory, if you didn't know that. All right, I'm going to be talking about that. We're also going to be talking about... Uh, 
Ambassador Cohen, former retired, uh, I mean retired U.S. Uh, former Under Secretary of State uh, Ambassador Cohen, going to be are going to be making a statement about him and this struggle, and also, of course, very very important is the interim government's response response to French Cameroon alleged commission of investigation that's supposed to have investigated the massacres in Ngarbo. We're going to be coming to that. That is the uh, kill presentation of the day. And so please go ahead and you hit uh, your share button and let us do that. And we'll also have uh, somebody joining, joining me on the set who shall be telling us exactly about what happened in Bangem two days ago where French Cameroon soldiers shot and killed six six civilians in Bangam. We're going to be having first class uh, information on that. So please go ahead and hit your share button. I see Billy Jones and he says share, 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 Amazonian share. Our able secretary is live. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. I see Hamori Hood say confirm. Acquire Arga. Acquire Arga local government. I see you, sir. Mufu Baron. I see you, Moleka Emmanuel. I see you, sir. There will never be any 20th May again. Victory to Ambazonians. Absolutely. Absolutely. They are dancing to our tune, isn't it? Shutting down 20th May. It wasn't supposed to be, anyways. So they are merely helping us, uh, helping us uh, preserve. The bullet that would have uh, gone all over the place on that day. So we are getting nearer to, to, to Boya. So let us be excited, ladies and gentlemen, especially Ground Zero. Let us be excited. Uh, it is not as bad as La Republic of Cameroon would want you to know with all those uh, sellouts coming on television and telling you how uh, they are pleading with Paul Beer to, to forgive them, to forgive them. So please, things are moving in the right direction. And also, let me tell you, I spoke to somebody yesterday from Yaounde who works uh, at the finance department who was telling me he is not sure. He is not sure that in the next, after, in the next six months, Yaounde will be able to pay their salaries because it is financially tough, very, very tough for the regime. And besides, Paul Bia is not there. There are many things going on there. Uh, in fact, 20th May is being cancelled not because of the coronavirus, as they would want you to believe. It is being cancelled because Mr. Bia cannot. He is not alive to address that occasion, uh, the occasion of 20th May. That is what is going on, but I'm coming to that. So please go ahead, hit your share button, and I can tell... We are almost there. We are almost there. Go ahead, hit your share button. Let others join the broadcast. And as they join, let me go ahead and do some announcements, somebody. This is, uh, this is it. To ABC Amber Club uh, members and to those who have not registered yet, please, some of you who have registered, your payments are not going through. The payments are not going through. Now I have to bring this announcement here because not everybody is in the forum yet. So if you are an ABC Amber Club member, please check your payments. Uh, quite a number of payments uh, have stopped going through. So check your payments for ABC Amber Club. If they are not going through, possibly maybe uh your credit card is expired or maybe not not enough funds uh in the card so please check that but i also want to remind those who have not yet registered to be members of the club that the opportunity is still there the opportunity is still there only five dollars only five dollars for you to become a member a registered member of ABC Amber Club. So please, I encourage you to go get to the website. 
www.abcambatv.org.org to register once you get there you will see on the top right hand of the website a banner that says join the club join the club you hit on that banner and you join the club there and also remember we have CID compulsory independence deals uh, still going on please I continue to say there is no way there is no way we are going to make it in this revolution without funds and I know some people are saying oh a lot of collections all over the place yes there will continue to be lots of collections LGAs are collecting money, counties are collecting money, ABC is collecting money, the IG is collecting CID, and there are also other levies out there. Please, we cannot grow weary. We cannot grow weary giving. Just imagine that the Sudanese, the Southern Sudanese, the, Ethio the Eritreans, they did this for 20 and for 30 years. 20 and 30 years nothing good comes cheap that is a fact nothing good comes cheap i want to appeal to all of you out there please identify your county identify your local government every amber restoration force on the ground must be supported must be uh, we must make sure they get the, the, the medical treatment that they deserve and that they need when need be. We have to make sure they have the right equipment in their hands when they go to the war front. The time of den guns is over. Again, the time of den guns is over. It's over. If any county is still carrying den guns, any county still carrying den guns, the people of that county should be blamed and held responsible should any of those boys die. Yes, the people of the county should be held responsible. I was talking to somebody from uh, Kupe Manoguba today and he was totally, totally upset and distraught that the people of Kupe Manoguba in particular, they are not standing behind their boys. They are not supporting the, to, uh, their boys. They are not doing enough doing enough to make sure the struggle is sustained in Kope Manoguba. And this is a challenge also to many counties and LGAs out there. Please, county by county and LGA by LGA is here to stay. And it is the best way to by which to prosecute this revolution. It is the best way by which to prosecute this revolution. So I am appealing to all of you out there we can never say until this war is over that we have given we are giving too much we will continue to give we cannot give up on our brothers our sisters our mothers our parents our homes those people who have been killed and communities that have been burnt down we cannot give up on them we cannot give up on them ladies and gentlemen we cannot give up on them if we give up on them then starting this whole thing would have been a grave mistake. Would have been a grave mistake. That is why we have to fight till the end. We have to fight till the end. And some of us will fight with our money. Some of us will fight with, uh, with our lips, our mouths, like I do here. Some of us will fight with our lives on the line, like those boys on ground zero. But most importantly, our money, our money is a real deal. No money, I won't be sitting here talking to you and talking to Grand Zero, passing information. Without money, nobody will be in the front lines on Grand Zero taking the bullet. So please, I'm challenging you, locate your local government. All this destruction that we see going on with La Revolu de Cameroon putting out concocted so-called reports on Ngarabu, we need we need to take back those territories and own them, possess them and own them, keep them. Or with only with our money can that happen. All right. And let me talk to you also about uh, some other things here. 
uh, as I said, a lot of grumbling is going on in Yaounde. I learned that the Prime Minister had a meeting in his office, in his office, the other day, and he was very, very upset and grumbling over the slow implementation of the so-called uh, uh, Grand National Dialogue Resolutions. He had expected that by now, refugees from Nigeria should be back in La Republic or in our territory. But the clergy, the people put in charge of those things were very frank to Dion Ngute, telling him there is just no way. In fact, they said all refugee leaders on ground one have resisted any attempts, any attempts allowing refugees to return home. They are returning home to where? In the middle of war? So essentially, members of their own commission are telling them the war is still on. Just as the French, their own greatest partners in the world, are telling them, forget about reconstruction. You do not carry out reconstruction in the middle of war. Their own member of the so-called Grand National Dialogue are telling them, their, their, their implementation committee, they are telling them, it is impossible for us to bring back refugees when war is still going on. And I can assure them, I can assure Dion Ngute and the stooges in Yaounde that this war will go on. This war will go on until Ambazonia becomes a free nation with a capital in Boya. There is no other option. There is no, no alternative to this. So if they think that they can go to Nigeria and lure refugees to come back home to no homes, uh, it is not going to happen. It is not going to happen. You want refugees to come back, go and reconstruct their homes. Give them back their homes and their communities. Unfortunately, the only way you give them back their homes and their communities is ending the war, pulling your soldiers out of Ambazonia, without which I doubt where you are going to stand to do any reconstruction. There is no space, no grounds for you out there in French Cameroon, the poor Tassons and the, what is the other guy is it, uh, in, in, in Kambe who have been put in charge of this reconstruction so-called. There is no space in Ambazonia for you to stand to carry out any form of reconstruction. You want reconstruction, we all want it. But you know what? We draw your soldiers first and end the war on the table then we can talk, all of us can talk reconstruction. You are not going to talk reconstruction behind our backs. We will sit down on the table and talk reconstruction. The moment you agree to a treaty that ends this war, that is the way to go. The international community believes that. That is what the French are telling you. And that is the way to go. The refugees are not coming back home. They are not coming back home. Nobody is coming back home. That is very, very important. But ladies and gentlemen, another uh, thing that I wanted to uh, bring to you is this issue of 20th May. 20th May, French Cameroon canceling 20th May. Well, let me tell you why they are canceling 20th May. The excuse has been that, oh, because of the coronavirus. Because of the coronavirus, 20th May, Labor Day. Labor Day and 20th May should be canceled. Do you really believe them? I don't think you believe them. They are asking for 20th for Labor Day and 20th May to be canceled, to be canceled, ladies and gentlemen, because of the coronavirus. That is not true. Let me tell you what is true, and you, have, and you can read it on my screen right now. The reason for the cancellation of 20th May is because Paul Bia is not alive to deliver the traditional 20th May address on that occasion. Paul Bia is not alive. Yaoundé is planning his transition. And you know what happened in the Coup d'Ivoire with Hufet Buoni. The man was dead for almost a year before authorities in, Swiss, in, in, in Côte d'Ivoire 
finally put out the announcement of his death. That is what is going on in Cameroon. Let me also explain to you why this thing is not about coronavirus. How do you cancel Labor Day on the 1st of May? Cancel 20th May on the 20th of May. But then you are announcing for children to go back to school on the 10th. On the 10th of June, merely 10 days. 10 days after May 20th. And you say it is because of the coronavirus? Absolutely not. The reason is what you see on your screen. Paul Bia is not alive. I have said this before. You can take my words to the bank. If he is alive, I challenge him. I challenge him. Come over, see our TV, your television box. Let your people see you. Make a live statement. Talk about the coronavirus. Talk about the war that you declared. Talk about your uh, Ingaribu commission. Talk about what is going on in your own country. Talk about the prisoners. Let us hear you. Then I will change this statement concerning the fact that you are dead. If you are not dead, I challenge you to do this. So ladies and gentlemen, you do not cancel 20th May on the tw celebrations on the 20th of May. And then, I mean, give the reason as being the coronavirus 10 days after. 10 days after you are asking schools to resume. Do you know how many people go to schools? The universities, the high schools, the secondary schools, the primary schools. How many people are going to be gathering in those institutions? How risky? How risky? You cannot even compare the population that gathers in schools to that of the 20th May. The 20th May gathers just a little chunk of people. But universities, you're talking about thousands, thousands. High schools in their thousands. Secondary schools in their thousands. Ladies and gentlemen, they just want to avoid the mention, the mention of the fact that Paul Bia is gone. Paul Bia is gone. That is why they are running helter skater from one prison yard to the other, trying to cohese prisoners to form part of their government. I hope you got that point. Very, very, very important. Now, also, I like to, uh, I like to talk about the passing of this our very, very dear, uh, dear chief uh, from uh, Libya. The chief of uh, Letia happened to come from the BLM, and this man's palace is only about 20 minutes walk, 20 minute walk from our own family compound. And this man happened actually to be my in-law. He happens to be uh, my in-law. This man was like every other Ambazonian I mean, he, like every other Ambazonian, he left the BLM running away from French Cameroon talks who were burning homes, killing people recklessly. He abandoned his palace with his wife, moved over to La Republic du Cameroon uh, town or city of Chang. It was in Chang that black legs, as they like to call themselves, black legs, they located his residence and went and betrayed him, sold him over to French Cameroon talks in Chang as an Amba supporter, an Ambazonian supporter. They came, they picked him up, locked him up in Chang under severe torture, under severe torture. He was then taken from Chang to Yaoundé, where first they took him to set again under severe torture, under severe torture. He was in set, he was held up in set for quite a few weeks, and then he was removed from set, taken to uh, Kondenge. In Kondenge, why the coronavirus pandemic broke out, he, got, he fell sick. It was suspected that he may have contracted the disease. The disease. 
coronavirus. He was carried to the emergency room in Yaounde. He was treated, brought back uh, to the cell in Yaounde. But ladies and gentlemen, the person you see on your screen, he did not have, he, he, was, not, he was not tested positive of the coronavirus. He did not test positive of the coronavirus. And so he was returned to his cell in Kondenge. But unfortunately, under the pains, the pains of the torture that he went through, he could not survive. He could not survive. He died. He died in the hands of French Cameroon uh, uh, gendarmes and from under their torture. This is a country that says respect institutions. This chief of Libyalum, he commands a village that is made up of at least, at least, I think about 200 people. I, if, 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 I'm not, if, if, if I'm not wrong, about 200 people. That the public to come around, picked him up, and without any due respect for the fact that he's a traditional ruler, they tortured him and he died out of the torture. I want to believe that every Libyan man and every Ambazonian is watching. These are the situations that will enable us, that will make us not to give up, ladies and gentlemen, on this war. That cannot happen. People like this we will all fight, fight to the last man standing because of them. Our innocent must not allow, must not be allowed to go free, to just die and go uh, that way. And so on behalf of the interim government, we want to pay our condolences to the family the immediate and the extended family of Chief Foretier, we will miss you and we thank you for your love for Ambazonia. We hope that when it is all said and done, we will all smile and rejoice when we remember you, knowing that you fought a good fight, you did your best. And I want to believe that all our chiefs and our phones would emulate the example you had. We will miss you, and Bazonia will miss you, but I can assure you there is joy. There will be joy at the end of the day. Ladies and gentlemen, again, I'm coming to you with a very, very important presentation today that will come at the bottom of the hour, at the bottom of the hour. For now, I want to take you to my guest, who is joining me all the way, all the way from uh, Belgium, Belgium. Two days ago, ladies and gentlemen, the people of Bangem witnessed another massacre, comparable only to what took place in Ngambo, only that in this case, the casualties are less. But six people, six people in Bangem were butchered were butchered, were, were butchered by French Cameroon army who descended upon that town indiscriminately. They killed unarmed civilians. This is something that we have become used to. But we will keep on condemning this because no courageous army, only, only cowards carrying guns go after unarmed civilians in a war like this one. In fact, it's a war convention that you do not go after civilians, unarmed people. What does somebody carrying no gun, what harm does somebody carrying no gun constitute to you which to somebody carrying 50 rounds of ammunition? What harm does he constitute? It happened in, the, in, 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 in Garibu. It happened in Bali. It has happened in Bali. 
It has happened in Ngokwet, Kotinjua. It is happening now in Bangem. But we'd like to know exactly what happened in Bangem. I am joined with me here, ladies and gentlemen, uh, a comrade, uh, comrade uh, Nzale Clovis, who is joining me all the way from uh, Belgium. Clovis, good evening, sir. How are we doing today? I'm doing good. Good evening, Sector Chris. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I really appreciate you coming on board to explain to us what exactly happened in the bank game two days ago, correct? Yep. So, uh, so tell us, tell us how, what exactly happened? Yeah, Bangem uh, is a uh, Bangem local government LGA is uh, the headquarter of uh, Kupe Mwanunguba County. Correct. Bang Bangem is a town there in that county. Then we have we have Mwambong. Mwambong is a village just a stone throw from Bangem town. So it is alleged that the military people camping at uh, the SDO's office because they never come down in town. They have taken a particular region there at the SDO's office. They only come down in town when there is a bit of chaos or when they have some information or intelligence for people that they want to trap down. Okay. It is, yeah, it is alleged that one of the uh, restoration fighters that has become a black leg gave information to the chief of Mwambo about our fighters that are yeah. taking refuge in the bushes well, in their abbots and now when we pass that information to the chief because the chief of Mwambo is a, a recalcitrant uh, chief what, what was this information passed to the chief he passed the information about the people who happens to defend our homeland, okay. those who are hiding in bushes. He gave who some names. Who was passing the information to the chief? One black leg. Okay. Who, okay. Who, yeah, who is said to be an Amber ex fighter, yes. but I don't know him properly. So when he gave this information to the recalcitrant chief of Mwambo, who has been working for the colonial regime of Yaoundé, the chief let us send this information to Bangem Town. And when the information got to the SDO, who happens to be a Bamleke man residing there, the colonial controller of uh, Kupe Mwanuguba County, a team of security men was formed that would invade that place with the knowledge of the chief of Mwambo. Okay. It was well planned. The guy who gave the names to the chief was among the entourage of the military men that left Bangen Town. He was in their car so that he can pinpoint, he can say this is this and this is that. Right. Normally, when they got to Mwambong, they first of all got to the chief compound, the chief of Mwambong, Mwambong and they spoke there. So they started moving. They could not go further into the abbot where our restoration forces are taking the uh, uh, have their camps. Now they had to start moving from house to house. The guy who has resigned that he's no longer an amber fighter who was hiding in that car, he was pointing hands that this house like this. So they essentially went house to house. He went house to house it, pointing. Would they track down? Would who they should track down? That this house has what a fighter, a restoration fighter. But those restoration fighters were none of those restoration fighters were not in their houses. Right. Because they don't come to town. Yeah. Now when they got there, they they invade a house, they took out if they find a young man who is somehow muscular who they who is presumed to be a fighter yeah, who was like shot. A fighter. Mm -hmm. They shoot they shot at the, the, those young people point blank. And nobody there. Yeah. The, the, those inhabitants of those houses never knew that there is 
Mwambong boy in the military car who is leading those pin military pointing, yeah. pin pointing. So also and what they're trying to say is that these guys made no attempts to arrest. They are approaching a house in which they know the people are certainly not armed. They make no effort to arrest. All they do is try to shoot point blank. Secretary Chris, I'm telling you, they never carried out any arrest. Then they shot point blank. When they brought you out, that is why you find you see from the pictures, you will find a young man in his housing attire, calm, relaxed, not running away. They were shot point blank. They never they were not even shot on their uh, on their legs so that they could be injured. That was their mission. So out of the six people that they killed, there was a seventh person who ran with a bullet. Okay. So that is the information we have had for now. And that we know those people were not fighters. It is clear they, they were simply mere civilians in, in their houses. Ladies so our fighters... Uh, those pictures he is refer Clovis is referring to, they are so bad, so gory for me to put them on your screen. You cannot uh, stand the side of those photos. Yeah. So I cannot uh, put them here. But uh, Clovis, what yes, uh, where sir. is the chief and where is this black leg who was moving with the soldiers and pinpointing uh, these homes information is reaching us that on verified information that after that act was carried out that invasion was carried out the military people left and he left with them but nobody saw him inside but we only had leaked information so uh, it is certain that he is still the military people either he's taking refuge in in bangem town because the sdo the, the sdo of uh bangem uh, of kupe manuduba division has also signed another press release emphasizing that if those fighters who are hiding in the bushes don't come out more of these invasions will be carried out in mambo in subsequent now, days this, to come. Uh... Did you say mayor or or SDO? SDO. SDO. The okay. senior and this SDO, the, uh, who is seen? I don't recall the name. I I think I have the communique in one of my five. But he's from, he's a, from a, I think from the western region. Eh? I understand the mayor of Bangen Wan Gasa. Somebody is a francophone. Not the mayor. The mayor and Gasa and uh, Mayor Gasa Ross is not from Bangem, he's from Tombe. Uh, that is Tombe, Tombe, okay. uh, Tombe. yeah. Okay. And the SDO is from the western, uh, probably maybe from Malum or Gongsamba or something is, like that. Yeah, from West Province, from the name, the name I saw on that communique. Yes, how about so, the chief? How about the chief? Where is him? What is going on? The chief. We can't give intelligence out like this, but our uh, people yeah, are. If, if are, something is sensitive, just keep it. But yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, is he, he is there in that village in that town? He, he is there, shuttling between Bangem town and that village. Nobody knows he, when he is home or when he is out because he is being covered by a gendarme. Those gendarmery. Now, I was speaking to somebody this morning who is one of you from Coupe maninguba and he was very very upset at his people the people of that lga that county they are not supporting these restoration forces and often they have to fight with then guns what is going on the problem with the uh, kupe maninguba county is not that they don't support but the support is not enough they don't they don't have I don't think they are backing this fight with every energy in them because if I quite remember, you know, we have our restoration forces in various LGAs. If you go at the site of Nguti, bordering Bangem, the restoration forces there that I've spoken with directly, they are well equipped. And that is why when the military left sometime from Bangem town and went to burn villages from uh, a La village, Babibo village, they never succeeded in touching any of them because they are well equipped. 
Now, but the problem is that the restoration forces that are said to be defending homeland at around Mwambong side, I don't think they are well equipped because I've seen them with phony matches and they don't have uh, good equipment. And that is why I have been carrying out some shows calling on our people to raise funds and to make sure that these guys are equipped properly so that they don't fight with their hands because very soon they, some of them might be discouraged if they don't have the real weapons to, to defend homeland. Now, the guy who ran with a bullet on him, uh, is he safe? I've not gotten, I've been trying to get some information this today, but I've not gotten any information, but I don't think he is dead. If he was, if something happened, then I would have gotten some information as, as pertaining to that. What about the others? Have they been uh, buried? I, I, because, you know, with, uh, in our tradition, in the Bakosi tradition, when somebody dies like that, they call it, uh, it's like something like bad luck. So they need to, to abomination so they need to be laid down i don't think they have some time to waste but mm -hmm. we were trying to to come up with a meeting yesterday to see we in belgium here the kupem Waniguba inhabitants here to see if we could raise something to at least console the families of those people who lost their life innocently so how we are trying they, to carry how about the family of these six what are they saying they are very bitter. They march, some of them went to the chief palace. The chief was not there because they were aware that the military, when the military people got to Mwambong, Mwambong they first of all visited the palace of the chief. So they, in their own thinking, they knew, they, know, they, they, they knew that if the military is going to shoot at somebody, then others are coming from the chiefs. That is why some of them marched there to the chief palace and the chief is not is nowhere to be found. That is why I say the chief is shuttling between Bangem and Mwambo, taking where cover. Is, with where Shandang. is the where is the headquarter of Kope Manuguba? Is it Mange? Is it Bangem? Is it Guti? Is it? Is Bangem? But the headquarter of Kope Manuguba is Bangem subdivision, the town where I hear from. Right, the Bangem local and, government, not subdivision. Bangem local government, yeah. And the Mwambo village is a village under Bangem when you want to go to Tombe. Okay. Yeah. Well, I hope that uh, you in Bangem, in your LGA, you are taking steps to address the situation and uh, make making sure that this chief, this chief, uh, no longer uh, do what he did, no longer do what uh he did because these are true enemies of this revolution and they should be given the treatment that they deserve six people are dead and gone because one man their own chief betrayed them i hope that you guys are strategizing on what actions to take properly and i think i wish to use this platform because it's so popular abc is being watched worldwide everywhere as we are talking on ground as we are talking like this i know my fellow comrades back home everywhere they are watching this i'm using this platform to still reiterate the fact that kupe Maninguba people the kupe Maninguba county should not be seen as that county which is which has a lukewarm attitude towards the restoration struggle. I'm calling on my brothers and sisters that hail from this uh, glorious county to dip their hand down and see that they sponsor this revolution to a conclusive end. Kupe Maniguba is part of the um, Bazonia. We are not a republic, so there is no way that we can be pulling our legs back when I see other counties are pulling a lot of weight and are backing their, their, their people back home properly to defend their country. So I really wish to call upon our people to do so. They, they, there are people that would probably, who are watching, who would love to contact you, maybe to support, to help. How can they reach you? 
I think I have a, I can, my phone number, uh, if if I can give, you can share my phone number online. We can always talk on WhatsApp. Uh, uh, unfortunately, at this moment, we cannot put it on the screen, but just uh, okay. just read it verbatim. So those who can copy, some will put it on the, people on the social media can put it on their screen for, for any interested uh, persons to call you. So just uh, mention your number. Zero, zero, three, two, four, eight, five, seven, one, two, four, eight, eight. One more time again. And take it over. Zero, zero, thirty, two, forty, eight, fifty, seven, twelve, four, 88. All right. Uh, Clovis, thank you so very much for coming on board to share with us uh, the happenings in the Coupe Maneguba, specifically in the Bangem, or is it called Mua or something like that? I Mambo. want to challenge every son and daughter of Coupe Maneguba over uh, out there, please step up your support for your community. Uh, Kupe Maneguba cannot be left behind. If Kupe Maneguba is left behind, this is what we will make sure we do. We will merge Kupe Maneguba with Libya. After all, we share a boundary and make sure that you don't exist. <laughs> okay. No, we don't want that. <laughs> we are we are all right. to be a part because we know we're part glorious nation. This nation that God has given to us, we are a big part of it. We don't mind. Uh, we don't mind that some people, not everybody, can come on board to support us. That we know we want a majority of people to put in their contributions to see that this this war of independence ends properly and positively on side properly. All right, yeah. Glovis, that is it. Thank you for coming on board. You have a great night, and I hope we we'll talk again. Thanks, Secretary Clearus. It was a pleasure for me to speak on this platform. All right. Have a great night, sir. Ladies and gentlemen, that is it for Bangem. And at this moment, I will take you into the real subject of this broadcast today. And that is about the uh, French Cameroon, French Cameroon Commission of so-called inquiry, Commission of so-called inquiry about the Ngabu massacres and also, but I will start, before I get there, I will start with a little note, a little note about former U.S. Secretary of State or Under Secretary of State, Herman Cohen, Herman Cohen. This is very, very important, and I hope, and this uh, needs your action. This needs your action, fellow Ambazonians. Your worries about the many inconsistent tweets of former U.S. Under Secretary of State, Ambassador Herman Cohen, have come to the attention of the interim government. We see the need to set the record straight here. First, Herman Cohen, who served as Assistant Secretary of State for African Affairs in the 1900s, in the 90s, is not in government now or anymore, and has not been for over two decades. He held the same position that Ambassador Thibault Naj currently holds, except that he held it from 1989 to 1993. Since he left government, he has worked to make money doing consulting for various companies and African governments. Some of his assignments include working, working with the oil company ExxonMobil in chart and in his own words, teaching them about the French. When he was in government, ladies and gentlemen, Ambassador Cohen did every good work for which we are grateful, very, very grateful. 
He worked to end apartheid in South Africa. He mobilized African states to push back against Iraqi dictator Saddam Hussein when he invaded Kuwait. He worked to attend and reform the economy in Zimbabwe after white minority rule ended there. Played a, he played a critical role in ending the civil war in Mozambique, among many others, other accomplishment, accomplishments. However, when it comes to the Southern Cameroon's struggle, Ambassador Cohen has very, very little knowledge of the aspirations of Southern Cameroonians and Bazonians. When examining his statements on our struggle for the actualization of our independence, it is very clear, very, very clear what Mr. Cohen wants. He always speaks of the need, and I quote, of an American mediator to either be appointed by La Republique du Cameroon or by the United States. The truth is that he wants this mediator, this American mediator, to be him, so he can make money. He has tried to get hired by us, by La Republic of Cameroon, and by others, and he keeps failing. His inconsistent tweets are all because he wants a contract, and that is, and that is it. It is about money for him. It is clear that he has no reviews on our revolution. He instead simply wants to get paid by anyone, anyone. At first he wanted decentralization. Then he said that we should have independence. Then he said, we are not economically viable to be independent. And so soon, and so, and, 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 and so on and so forth. He is not a serious actor and just won a contract and therefore does not deserve our time for today. Ambassador Cohen, if you are watching this, please understand. We admire the service that you have given the United States of America and for Africa. However, however, sir, we Southern Cameroonians and Bazonians respectfully say that your services are not needed in our quest for total independence and do not continue to attempt to get a contract from any of us. We know about your attempts with the Democratic Republic of Congo, but please stop trying to replicate them here or with us. It causes confusion and is counterproductive for all. Fellow Ambazonians, please, we urge you to disregard his tweet and unfollow him on Twitter. It is for both our own good and his own good as well. Prior to unfollowing him, please let Ambassador Cohen know that his attempts to get a contract in regard to our struggle will be unsuccessful and that he should finally, finally enjoy his retirement as he enters into his ninth decade on planet Earth. That said, and now about French Cameroon Commission on Ngarbu Massacres. Ladies and gentlemen, on Tuesday, April the 21st, regime authorities in French Cameroon finally published their findings on the Garibou incident in which over 30 Ambazonians, including children, were gunned down by their soldiers and buried in a mass grave on February 13, 2020. The report of the alleged investigation lays full responsibility of the massacres at the doorsteps of the Cameroon regime and its vicious soldiers. The report indicts the soldiers 
and their Kohis Hausa Fulani vigilante groups for the whole operation, prescribing punishment and, recommend, and recommend, recommending the exhumation of the dead to give them what they call a decent burial. As a mom, as a more permanent fix to the certain alert insecurity threats in the community, the commission recommends a permanent French Cameroon military camp, military camp, to be erected in Ngarabu. In the ears of anyone who doesn't understand how the massacres played out and the many and the many other damages inflicted on the people of Ngarabu. The alert investigation, ladies and gentlemen, will sound like a job well done. A job well done. A vindication of La Republic du Cameroon's ability to solve investigate. It comes across like La Republic du Cameroon has finally taken responsibility for the action of its soldiers. But but this cannot be true, and it is not the case, for there are still so many questions surrounding the massacre still begging for answers. How can anyone believe the investigations as veritable, considering that in this case, La Republique du Cameroon was both the plaintiff and the judge, or the, the accused and the judge? La Republique would carry out such dastard murders and then be asked to investigate herself. It is pure mockery to the justice system. Imagine that the regime that carried out the crime is allowed to trespass into southern Cameroon's territory to conduct the findings in a sovereign territory. That was a violation of the Southern Cameroon's sovereignty. The report cannot be trusted or taken with a pinch of the salt because Cameroon, French Cameroon, cannot and should not play the rule of the accused and the judge at the same time. Not in a thousand years would a comprehensive factual report be produced by some party that carried out the crimes. The interim government of the Federal Republic of Ambazonia therefore, therefore, completely rejects the Commission's findings or report of a large investigation of Cameroon investigating herself. The report is a whitewash. It is intended to conceal the scope of the crimes and criminal responsibility for the crimes in the massacre and all other crimes in the southern Cameroons. The interim government denunciation of the alleged investigations is based on the fact that the Ngarabu massacre, well, the Ngarabu massacre falls within the context of genocide, crimes against humanity and war crimes committed in the southern Cameroons and Bazonia by French Cameroon soldiers pursuant to an official policy developed, developed and ordered by the highest civilian and military command in French Cameroon. The massacre at Ngarubu follows a consistent pattern a consistent pattern to those committed with impunity throughout the national territory of the southern Cameroons and Bazonia. The shooting of unarmed civilians and the, and the burning of corpses in Bali, for example, the mass murders in Bali by Kundu, in Bangam, as you heard a few minutes ago, Pinyin, Indian, Kupe, Maneguba, among others. The shooting to death of handicapped persons in back in Kumba, Belo, Ekona, the brutal and heartless murder of three months old baby Mata in Moyoka, and the killing of 90 years old Mami Abi.
among others. And what about the killing of the witness, the witness to the UN staff of this very unbearable incident? French Cameroon crimes have claimed the lives of more, more than 13,000 Ambazonians, among whom are old persons, children, and the vulnerable, who have systematically been burned, burned in more than three ancestral and civilian settlements in their sleep. The highest levels of command within French Cameroon's military, military's high command, starting with Commander-in-Chief Paul Beer, Paul Beer, bear criminal responsibility for these crimes. The civilian and military commanders within the chain of command of the French Cameroon military have consistently, consistently praised the professionalism of French Cameroon's army and launched scouting and unwarranted attacks against the victims and international human rights organizations for denouncing, denouncing these same crimes. He did so in the Ngarambu massacre before now claiming responsibility. Consistent with the established policy, civilians and military commanders of French Cameroon military defended the criminal actions of their genocidal soldiers and allied militia in Ngarabu genocide and carried out a campaign of terror, a campaign of terror against witnesses and international humanitarian workers operating in the area. The UN staff who carried out an investigation of it is not yet back in the northern zone. This crime has been replicated in every criminal act carried out within the territory of Southern Cameroon over the past 59 years and intensified with a declaration of war by Paul Beer on November 30th, 2017. Paul Beer, in his declaration of war, identified the enemy to his soldiers and French Cameroon citizens and Bazonians and ordered a genocide, crimes against humanity, and war crimes starting with an internet blockade, an invasion of Ambazonian universities and places of learning during the raid and armed attacks, mass arrests of civilians, rape of Ambazonia girls and women, the massacre of thousands and the deportation of hundreds of thousands across the border into Nigeria and the IDP camps in the forest and neighboring countries occurred. During his successive end of year addresses, Paul Beer, Paul Beer praised his soldiers for these crimes, characterizing their actions as professional, professional. Other genocide masterminds as Isa Chiruma Bakari, Paul Atanganji, Lele Lafrik, Okalia Bilai, you can name the rest, they all justified and praised the crimes. The use of criminal gangs and militias created and and sponsored by French Cameroon to reinforce the genocide and other crimes in the southern Cameroon has been highlighted in this French Cameroon's own report in Ngarabu massacre. The creation and use of militias was publicly announced by French Cameroon's Minister of Territorial Administration in the person of Paul Atanganji from the very inception of this war. These militia and criminal gangs have been deployed to villages to kill, deployed to abduct, deployed to rape, deployed to take ransoms, 
the interim government has publicly denounced, denounced the activities of French Cameroon allied armed groups and enablers that are committing crimes while purporting to be Ambazonia liberation movements. The Bui massacres, the Mogamo massacres, and the recent burning of civilian settlements in Bangan, of course, Bangan too, Bangan in Libya, and then Bangan in Kupe Manuguba, by Bakundu, Moyoka, you can name the rest, which the interim government is currently carrying out a comprehensive investigation is part of it, part of French Cameroon's crimes against humanity and against the people of Ambazonia. Although French Cameroon has highlighted the participation of its allied militia in the Ngarebu massacre, they failed, again, they failed to explain why it became necessary to create and to deploy militias and criminal gangs to civilian areas to prosecute the genocide. The well-coordinated participation in the genocide by French Cameroon soldiers, militias, and criminal gangs and enablers has been exposed in French Cameroon own report. French Cameroon and its militias and criminal gangs have been deployed and infiltrated in rural and urban areas in the southern Cameroons and are committing committing crimes of great intensity with impunity. The interim government again calls on the international community and the United Nations to conduct an internationally sanctioned and empowered commission to investigate these crimes and to bring the masterminds to account. French Cameroon does not have the political way. They don't have the good way either, nor the ability to conduct independent investigations in its own crimes. French Cameroon does not have the legal framework, ladies and gentlemen, to prosecute the crimes of genocide, crimes against humanity, and of course, war crimes, uh, and has dishonestly, they have dishonestly recommended the superior commander for the alleged physical perpetrators for only administrative discipline, only administrative discipline. They are not arresting them, they are just disciplining them. La République du Cameroon sanction report limits the scope of the investigation and attempts to whitewash the crime and the, criminal respons and, the, and the criminal responsibility of member of the high command of its army and its civilian commanders for the genocide, the crimes against humanity, and war crimes which in Garibu massacre is an integral component. Yes, an integral component. Ladies and gentlemen, it is for these reasons the interim government rejects this whitewash report as an attempt to, ob to obviate the criminal responsibility of the masterminds of the genocide in the southern Cameroons and Bazonia. Ladies and gentlemen, I will open the phones right now and I will take a few questions and we will call it a day. I have 15 minutes to take a few questions. So please go ahead and make your phone call. If you've got a question, please make your phone call. You can make your phone call at this moment. All right. I guess no phone call is coming in today. If no phone call is coming in today, I am going to call it a date, and I will hope to see you uh, on Saturday. On Saturday, uh, when we are having, when we are having a very very big 
launch of the award project, a very big live launch of the award project. The award project going to be launched on Saturday. It shall be live on ABC. Shall be live on ABC. And I want to believe that all of you will tune in as the president of Ambazonia launches, launches uh, this very, very important, this very, very important award ceremony. Please, that is all I had for you today. God bless you all.